Matthew 6, 33. Jesus said, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And what would happen? All these things shall be added to you. Now, if you look up back in the previous part of the chapter, all these things include housing, clothing, food. He's talking about natural needs and desires. And a lot of folks shout about that last part, but as we've, as we've said, this last part, all these things will be added to you. That's not our part. Who's going to do that? Not us. That's his part. Do, how long do we need to camp on his part? We need to be, remind him of it a lot so he don't forget to do it? Or, huh? Urge him to come on and do what you said? A whole lot of folks, they just, they focus on God's part. And it's a big mistake. Because he's never going to forget. And he's never going to fail to do it, what he said he'd do, if... We do our part. Now, all these things being added to you, is that for everybody? No. Is that going to happen for everybody? No. Who's it going to happen for? A very select group. Those who seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Do you believe that as surely as we do that, he will do what he said he would do? You can count on it. So we need to focus on our part. What's our part? Seek first. The kingdom of God and his righteousness. Now, uh, Hebrews 1.8, if you can put that up for us, please. Hebrews 1.8 says that righteousness is the scepter of the Lord. Thy throne, O God, forever is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. Everything God does is right. And when you see, uh, somebody says, well, is God reigning here? If he's reigning there, the right things are going to be happening. What's good and what's right. So we are to seek his kingdom and his rightness. Uh, what is the kingdom of God and how do we seek it? The kingdom of God is the king's dominion, the king's rule or reign, what the king reigns over. And what is the kingdom of God? It's what God is reigning over. What is God reigning over? Some say he's reigning over everything. Ultimately, that's true. In the immediate present, it's not true. God is not ruling and reigning over every man and woman on this planet. And God's will is not being done in everybody's life. If you think so, you're just wrong. Is God really responsible for all the evil and destruction in this earth? Is all that really his will? In this 33rd verse, back up, you're in the 6th chapter, back up to verse 9. Back up to verse 9, please. They asked Jesus about how to pray. And he gave them what we call the Lord's Prayer. Let's all pray it out loud together. He said after this manner pray. Our Father, which art in heaven... Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Did you notice how much the kingdom is referred to in this prayer? And if you look at what Jesus said and taught and what the apostles said and taught, the kingdom is in constant reference. It's something that's been largely lost in the modern church. Did you know the gospel that's so much talked about is actually the gospel of the kingdom. It's the good news about the reign of God. And yet that's, that sounds almost foreign to modern Christians. 
And we're to be seeking first his kingdom. Now, what did the prayer say? Thy kingdom come. Thy what? Will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That's a great revelation about the kingdom of God. How do you know the, the, the king is ruling over it? The king's will is being done. And people, some people try to say, oh, God's ruling over everything on the earth. Right now, he is not. It's just not true. Now, there'll come a time when every knee is going to bow and every tongue is going to confess. But right now, the Bible says Satan is the God of this world. I could give you a dozen references for that in the New Testament. If you haven't been with us, go back to the back, get the CDs, DVDs, go online, download it. It won't cost you anything. And go through the scriptures with us. There's a lot of stuff been taught and preached in churches that's contrary to the Bible. And all of us have to watch and examine ourselves continuously. Just because uh, it's been preached for a hundred years doesn't make it true. Amen. It wasn't true when the guy came up with it 200 years ago and it's still not true. But just because it becomes very familiar and comfortable, people think it is. Examine everything. Everything you hear me say, everything you hear anybody say, everything comes out of your mouth. Where is it? Where is it in this book? I know in the beginning days of me going to Bible school, the Lord challenged me personally about this. I don't mean to hurt a voice, but inside he spoke to my heart. He said, Keith, everything you realize you believe, find it in the Word. Find it. Challenge yourself. Examine yourself. And so I, I took that seriously. And as time would go on, I'd, I'd think of something and go, oh yeah, I believe that. Okay, where's it at? Where's it at? So I'd start looking. Sometimes I found it. Sometimes I found part of it. Other times I couldn't find it at all. So I'd search. And I'd search. And I thought, well, I know this is in here. I've believed this all my life. Where's it at? And in my search, I actually found scriptures that contradicted it. I thought, uh-oh. And then I realized... I heard my grandpa say it. Yeah. Some preacher that I grew up with said it. And it wasn't right then and it isn't right now. Friend, let, let, let's discipline ourselves to take everything back to the Word. Did Jesus operate this way? When He was challenged, when He was tempted, what did He say? It is written. It is written. It is also written. You think you and I ought to operate that way? Go with me, please. You're there in Matthew 6. Go to the fifth chapter, please. Let me, let me finish that thought. This may be a new thought to some people. People say, no, no, God's in control. <laughs> God's in control. So God was in control of you. Everything you said yesterday. Everything, everything you did. Whether you ate cornflakes or, or Rice Krispies. Everything you said, everything you did, everything, everywhere you went, God was in control and responsible for all of that. No, come on, listen. Thy will be done, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, how? On earth, On earth how? As it is in heaven. How much crime do they have in heaven today? How much? Are there some parts of heaven you ought not go after dark? Huh? How much, how much crime in heaven? None. Absolutely none. How much poverty in heaven? None. Oh, there's some people going hungry. There's some people that... No. 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 Zero. Zero. How, how, much, how many atrocities? How, how much bad weather? None. How many tornadoes, hurricanes, earthquakes? They're heaven. None. None. You know why? God is in complete control there. And he doesn't have two separate wills, one for heaven and one for earth. He told us to pray, thy will be done on the earth as it is in heaven. If his will is already being done on the earth, why would we need to pray that it would be done? Amen. Now let's get rid of the tradition Amen. and realize the truth. The devil would like nothing better than for you to believe there is no devil and that God is responsible for everything that's happening down here so that you blame him, you blame God. For what the devil and, and crazy people are doing. Yeah. <laughs> but God's not our problem. Amen. Never has been. 
Never will be. In the beginning, when God created everything, the Bible said everything he made was very good. There was no curse. There was no death. There was nothing. And then after everything is restored, the Bible said there's going to be new heavens and new earth. And in it, there's going to be no more curse. And there'll be no more dying, no more crying, no more pain, no more sorrow. Now, this stuff that's happening right now because of man's sin and the curse was never the perfect will of God and won't be the perfect will of God. He did it the way he wanted it. What happened as a result of sin and curse is not an improvement on God's plan. Anybody looking forward to an earth and a heaven where there is no curse? We've never been in a place like that. Where nothing ever gets old or dies. Where you, where you go millennia after millennia without one wrinkle or gray hair or pain. Not one bit of pain. We, we've never been in a place like that. We've never been in a place like that. There are, there are thousands and thousands of accounts of people that died and went to and saw something of heaven and, and came back. And virtually every one of them was so unhappy they came back. <laughs> Some of them became quite depressed and became upset. Why? Because we, we don't know how depressed this place is. It's heavy with the curse and shadow and darkness and evil. And, and, and once we get free from this, everything is just going to just lighten up, brighten up. Life with zero death. That's what we got to look forward to. But don't get in too big of a rush to go. You got a job to do. You are boots on the ground with a mission to accomplish. Let's get in. Let's get it done. Let's get out of here. Amen. What do you say? Yes, sir. <laughs> sir, yes, sir. <laughs> Matthew 5, are you there? Matthew 5, 3, Jesus speaking what we call the Beatitudes. And he said, blessed are the poor in, in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they that mourn, for they'll be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Is this true? Yes. Yeah. Now the proud will be resisted, but the humble get grace. And, and God's people submitting themselves to him, humbling themselves before him, shall inherit the earth. The Bible tells us a time is coming when there'll be new heaven and new earth. Uh, like we just got through saying, there'll be no more curse and there'll be no more sea, no more oceans. Well, most of the planet's covered in oceans, but in the future it won't be. That'll free up a lot of real estate. It's the truth. Read it. Search it out. Who's going to inherit the earth? Who's going to get it? Who's going to be in charge? Blessed are they that hunger and thirst after righteousness, they'll be filled. Blessed are the merciful, they'll obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, they'll see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, they'll be called the children of God. Blessed are they that are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. The world does not know who we are right now. But we are the rulers of the coming age and world. And we're in training right now. And this is the briefest thing we will ever do. This life, if you live a hundred plus years, that's nothing. To God, a millennia is like a day. And he's perceiving it correctly. We just have been around such a short amount of time, our perspective of time is, is not right yet. You can see it in general life. A five-year-old thinks a week is a long time. Right? You got to wait a week. A whole week? And don't even mention a year. A year. Oh, a year. A year to a five-year-old is like a century. But what about when you get 75? What's a, what's a year like to you then compared to what it was when it was five? You think, it's almost 2014. 
What happened to 2013? Yeah. <laughs> what if you've been around for a million years? Wow. What would a year seem like to you? Well, eventually it's going to be the same as God perceives it. To you and me, a thousand years will be like a day is to us now. A millennium. So what's happening right now, our life here, this is the, the briefest thing we'll ever do. Just a few more breaths and we're all out of here. Hmm? What should we be doing right now, you and me? It's, you know, you see, you see Christian after Christian after Christian, somebody dies and they're shocked. They're just shocked. A loved one dies, a father, mother, brother, sister, a spouse, and, and they're like, I can't live. You should have known they're going to die. Everybody you know is going to die. You're going to die. The Lord tears is coming just that much longer. Your dog, your cat, your goldfish. We should not be shocked that somebody dies. We're told on the earth somewhere, every second or so, every 1.8 seconds, somebody dies. People are, there's a mass exodus off this planet. If you could back off, uh, you know, outside the earth and see spiritually everybody who's leaving here, they're leaving here by the hundreds of thousands all the time. And births are arrivals, arrivals and departures, <laughs> planet earth. And to live down here like we're going to do this forever is playing ostrich, is sticking your head in the sand, yeah. isn't it? You, you're not going to be here very much longer. If you live another 50 years, another 75 years, that's going to pass like that, and you're out of here. Are you ready to leave? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I got some mixed response on that. <laughs> it's kind of like the one guy years ago, these guys were... Uh, pe people did a lot more walking to go places than they do nowadays, and they're walking down a dirt road... And, they met these fellows, strangers. They didn't know them. And they'd just been in church and heard a real strong message on witnessing to people. You know? And so they met him and, and they just started out the conversation and said, hey, uh, you want to go to heaven? And the guy said, no. <laughs> he said, what? You don't want to go to heaven when you die? He said, oh, yeah, sure. He said, I thought you was getting up a load right now. But how many believe the truth of the word that, that our life down here is like grass in your yard? It's like a flower that yeah. blooms just for a few moments and then it's past and we're gone. And what should we be doing down here? Not acting like we're going to do this forever, but using our time with wisdom, redeeming the time to seek the kingdom and His righteousness, and do what we're supposed to do on this planet. Do you believe it or not? Yeah. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake. Theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And the Bible said, they that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. You go all the way with God, not everybody's going to be happy about it, including some of your family. You will experience some persecution, but any kind of sacrifice or persecution is not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed. Theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when men shall revile you and persecute you and say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. I'm blessed because all that's happened to me. I'm in good company. <laughs> Rejoice and be exceedingly glad. For what? Why? 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 Is your reward. Great, Great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which are before you. The more I go into this and understand it of myself, the more I see we need to be more long-term minded. We've been entirely too short-sighted 
Everything about this life, everything about next week and the next year. We need to think next millennia. We need to be thinking what happens the next thousand years, what happens the next 10,000 years. Because you're going to be around. And you know that helps you to relax. When you realize you're going to be around that long, you just go, okay. What's the rush? You're not going to be down here that long, but you're going to be around. Everybody's going to be around somewhere. How many want to be around with God? Want to be around with what, what he's doing? In the, put up on the screen for us, please, Revelation 2 and 23. Now, he mentioned reward. And he talked about inheritance. And there's much, much, I mean, there are, I guess, thousands of verses in the scriptures about inheritance. And uh, he says the last part of this verse, I'm he that searches the reins and hearts, and I will give unto every one of you according to your works. Skip down to verse 26. He that overcomes and keeps my works to the end, to him I will give power over the nations. Skip down to chapter 22. Well, they'll put it on the screen for us. 22.12, Revelation, 22.12. He said, Behold, I come quickly. And he's not coming empty-handed. My reward is with me to give to who? To every man, evenly divided. Huh? No. No. Some people have an idea that the coming kingdom is communist. And socialist. And that everything's going to be divided exactly the same. You and I and everybody else will have the exact same uh, house with white two pillars right beside each other and we'll all be doing the same thing and no, 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 no. No, no. We got into that last time. Some people are going to be ruler over ten cities. Some over five. Some over none. But as you get into this, I think a lot of people, well I know a lot of folks, have confused some things. Concerning salvation and inheritance. Concerning salvation and reward. It's been all muddled together. And I believe the Lord will help us today. Are you believing with me? To get some things really clear and distinct. How's the Lord going to reward us? According to what? Our work. Now you just say the very term works And a lot of folks start turning you off. Oh, no, no. It's not by works. This is. (laughs) We're not saved by works. But we are rewarded. According to our works. Hmm? True or not? It is. Now, uh. He said, I I come quickly, my reward's with me, to give every man according as his work shall be. Go please to Ephesians 1. You're holding your place there, I suppose. Ephesians 1 and 10. He said, in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth in him. There's coming a time when heaven and earth will be merged. And God's will and influence will be exactly the same on earth as it is in heaven. You won't be able to tell one from the other. His will will be done entirely. And the kingdoms of this world shall have become his. His kingdom that shall never end. And God is going to rule absolutely over everything, over all of it. He's not going to do it all. He's not going to handle all the details personally. 
He's going to appoint different ones over different parts. Jesus being the King of kings and Lord of lords. But who's the kings he's king of? And who's the lords he's Lord of? So what are you going to be over? A lot? Some? Nothing. <laughs> We're moving right along now, aren't we? Verse 12, excuse me, verse, verse 11. In whom we have obtained an inheritance, being predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things after the counsel of his own will, that we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ, in whom you also trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and whom also after you believed you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession to the praise of his glory. Somebody died and left you something. I said somebody died and left you an inheritance. And in this case, rose from the dead to make sure you get it. And you and I are already enjoying the earnest of our inheritance in our current salvation and the Holy Spirit. After being washed by the blood of the Lamb, our sins being washed, the greatest gift He ever gave us, the Holy Spirit. I said the Holy Spirit. When you are experiencing the comfort of the Spirit, the joy of the Spirit, the peace of the Spirit, the wisdom of the Spirit, the fullness of the Spirit, you are experiencing peace of heaven, part of heaven. And we don't have the whole, but we got a foretaste. We got an earnest. Why? The rest of it, we're getting later. Are you excited at all about this? The rest of it, we're getting later. Skip to the fifth chapter and the first verse, Ephesians 5, 1. Be ye therefore followers of God, imitators of God as dear children. Walk in love as Christ also has loved us and has given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling savor. Now, without going into all the detail... The Bible teaches that they that partake in Christ's sufferings partake in His glory. And this is not talking about what Jesus sacrificed and suffered for us in substitution. It is the commitment and sacrifice it takes to follow God fully. And they that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution, the Bible mentioned. Those who are willing to sacrifice more to follow him fully are going to qualify for more and are going to receive more glory in time to come. It's not talking about being sick. It's not talking about being depressed. It's not about being anxious and scared. It's in faith sacrificing and being willing to go further than others do. Hmm? It can be as simple as sacrificing taking a nap on the couch. Huh? And getting up and doing something that he needs. And uh, he said, but fornication, uncleanness, covetous, let it not be once named among you as become saints. Keep going. Neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. For this you know, no whoremonger, no unclean person, nor covetous man who's an idolater has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Is he writing to believers? Yes. He is, the saints at Ephesus. Mm -hmm. Can a Christian do these things? <laughs> I'm see people going. <laughs> Let me help you out. Yes, they can. He's writing to Christians. A whoremonger is somebody, this be specifically talking about a man 
that's involved in multiple female partners that he's not married to. And we'll, we'll see other scriptures. He's talking about covetousness, unclean. He mentioned a lot of other things prior to that. But this is a person that's yielding to their flesh and violating their conscience. Does it affect their inheritance? Yes. Now, this is the thing a lot of folks haven't wanted to see or acknowledge. And when people read that, they will add to that and say, well, that means they're going to be lost. Did it say they're going to be lost? You've got to watch about adding things too. What did it say? Doesn't have inheritance in the kingdom. It's quiet in here now, isn't it? <clears throat> Go to Galatians 5. Don't worry, I've got more scripture for you. <laughs> I got lots of scripture for you. You ready for it? Yes. Come on, help me out now. Check me out. Make sure I'm reading it right. Watch me close. Galatians 5, 19. He said, the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these? Adultery. Now, adultery is being involved sexually, emotionally with somebody else's spouse. Fornication. That's being involved emotionally, sexually with somebody you're not married to. Somebody says, well, we're going to be married. That's exactly the same as not being married. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How many people were going to be married who never were? That's right. yeah. That's right. yeah. So then they're involved physically with somebody else's spouse who would later be somebody else's spouse. And, I, and, and we all got flesh and hormones can rage, but we also have the greater one inside us. And if you choose to, you can make the right decision and not be flesh ruled, flesh dominated. Uncleanness, lasciviousness, keep reading. Idolatry, witchcraft. Did you know witchcraft is a work of the flesh? Yeah. Hatred. Variants, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, reveling, such like. What is all this? This is yielding to the flesh. And there are different degrees of it. But I tell you before, as I've told you in time past, so he told them about this more than once. Uh -huh. yeah. That they which do such things, what will happen? Will shall not inherit the kingdom. Of God. Can Christians do these things? Yeah. Certainly they can. Certainly they can. Can Christians get drunk? Can Christians have affairs? Can Christians pitch fits? Flesh out. Lash out. Yes, they can. But if you choose that lifestyle over a godly lifestyle, can it affect you? Can it cost you? Yes, it can. Go with me to 1 Corinthians, please, the 6th chapter. As we go through these, it will become clearer and clearer, the truth here. 1 Corinthians 6 and 9. He said, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators. That's people being involved sexually, emotionally with people who are not married to. Idolaters, that's worshiping stuff other than God. Adulterers, that's being emotionally, sexually involved in people that's not your, somebody else's spouse. Effeminate, that's a man acting like a woman. Abusers of themselves with mankind, the literal word for that is sodomite. Verse 10, nor thieves, covetous, drunkards, revilers, extortioners. What about folks that, that live like that and yield to that? What? They won't inherit. None of those shall inherit the kingdom of God. Now people say, well, that, that people have assumed that means they'll be lost. He didn't say that. Amen. He didn't say that. Being born again, being in the family, being saved from hell, you shouldn't assume is the same as what you inherit and your reward. And what you're over. I'm convinced. There's going to be a lot of people in heaven. You're surprised are there. 
I'm preparing you for it right now. So when you, when you see them, you don't go, what? How'd you get in here? <laughs> That'd be rude. <laughs> they may say, I'm shocked to see you too. <laughs> but being saved from hell and being in the family of God, you should not equate to reward. We're not saved by our works. We're saved by grace and faith in what Jesus has done for us. Right? right. But we're rewarded according to our works. Amen. And is it fair for a man or a woman who kept their flesh under, who didn't cause people harm in life, who gave of themselves above and beyond what everybody around them did because they loved the Lord and lived for Him and found His plan and followed it fully? Is it fair for somebody who fleshed out their whole life to get the same reward? They do. No. To be over the same thing? They are. Would that be fair? No. How is that fair? It's not. And it's not the way it is. And it's not the way it's going to be. In the third chapter of 1 Corinthians... I think it gets even clearer here. 1 Corinthians 3 and 1. He said, Brethren, I could not speak to you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. Now, you know, this is the bunch that talks in tongues all the time. The Corinthian church. The people that's got the gifts of the Spirit. And he says they're a carnal bunch. See, just because you talk in tongues and have some gifts of the Spirit doesn't mean you are a spiritual person and walk different from those that are yielding to the flesh. Amen. Truth is, you can yield to the Spirit in the morning and yield to the flesh in the afternoon if you choose to. Verse 2, I fed you with milk, not with meat, for up till now you were not able to bear it, neither yet now are you able. You can't take it now, he said. Verse 3, for you are yet carnal, where is there's, there's among you envying and strife and divisions. Are you not carnal and walk as men? Verse 4. Let's just stop. If you walk carnally enough, will it cost you? Yes. Yes. So he, he's telling them right here, there's a lot of things I wanted to give you, but you couldn't take it. So what is it they didn't get? What is it they didn't hear? They didn't see. They didn't get preached to them. They didn't get ministered to them. Said out loud, carnality, carnality costs. costs. It does. He said, one of you says, I'm Paul of Paul. One says, I'm of Apollos. Are you not carnal? Keep going. Who's Paul? Who's Apollos but ministers by whom you believed, even as the Lord gave to every man? I planted Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. It's not Paul, it's not Apollos, it's God. So then neither is he that plants anything, neither he that waters, but God that gives the increase. Keep reading. Now he that plants and he that waters are one. Every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor, his own work. Now we live in a, in a group and a generation today that don't want to hear work at all. Nothing about work. No, we're not under the law. No works. No works. Everything for free. Everything falls on us. Everything's great and done. We all get the same thing. This is people making up scriptures as they go along. <laughs> your reward is according to your works. And your and my inheritance to come is affected by our faithfulness now. How many remember what Jesus said telling the parable of the talents? Didn't he say, you've been faithful over a few things. I'm now going to make you ruler over many things. Based on what? Based on you. What if you weren't faithful? When we know one wound up with ten, one of them wound up with five, one of them wound up with none. Now, uh, keep reading. 
the rest of this. He that plants and he that waters is one. Every man will receive his own reward according to his own labor. Keep going. For we are laborers together with God. He keeps using that word, labor. Anybody know what labor means? It means work. 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 People say, I'm redeemed from works. I'm redeemed from work. No, you're not. We're laborers together. You're God's husbandry. You're God's building. You're supposed to be working on God's vineyard, working on God's building, working on God's church, seeking God's kingdom, and you got something that you can contribute. And if you're smart, you'll be doing it because it is affecting your future inheritance and your future reward. And a lot of people say, oh, if I can just get to heaven, I won't care. You say that now. But when you see the 10 cities we're ruling over, you might go, "Eh, (laughs) wish I'd have stepped it up a little bit. Verse 10, according to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I laid the foundation, another builds thereon. Let every man take heed how he builds thereon. Is work involved in building? What are we building around here? Are we seeking the kingdom? Do we want it built? Do we want it to rise? Do we want it to expand? Right? Let every man take heed how he builds. Other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. If you build on anything other than him, when the storm hits, it's not going to stand. And so it will have been a waste of your time and labor and effort and expense. Verse 12, if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, Every man's work, if he has any, shall be made manifest. For the day shall declare it because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. Now, some people's work spiritually is like gold and silver and precious stones. Some people's work spiritually, other people's work is like wood and hay and stubble. And we're going to be rewarded in time to come based on our work, what we did. And many have read this and they thought, well, that means if if it's wood, hay, and stubble, your works are not good enough for you to be saved, so you'll be lost and you'll go to hell. No, 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 no. Read the next verse. If any man's word abide, which he has built thereupon, what'll happen? What'll happen? He shall receive a reward. Verse 15, if any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss. Loss of what? His work, his time, his effort. It will have been for nothing. But he himself shall be saved. Come on, can you see this, friends? Yet so as by fire, he makes it in with himself. (laughs) Which sure beats going to hell. (laughs) Come on, how many would agree with that? Sure beats going to hell. (laughs) But it's not all you could have had. In Revelation, just put this up for us, Revelation 14, 13. Revelation 14, 13. There's coming a time when all of that we have done in this life is going to be tried by God's fire. And if it was done at the direction of the Spirit, it was done from a right heart and motive, it was done in faith and love, it was done in obedience, after the fire passes it, over it, it'll gleam like gold and precious stones And according to what's there, we'll be rewarded and we'll receive inheritance. If you just came up with something on your own and if it was just for you to be seen and noticed and it wasn't God and your heart wasn't right and a bunch of stuff that wasn't right, when the fire hits it, it'll go up in smoke. 
nothing will be left because it wasn't real and substantial in spirit to start with. And I don't care if you worked on it for 50 years and spent $10 million on it, it's gone. And it doesn't mean a thing and it'll never mean anything in the future and you'll get no reward for what you did. How many understand we don't have 50 years to waste? Amen. Do we? No. On doing nothing stuff. But in Revelation 14, it brings this out in verse 13. He said, I heard a voice from heaven saying to me, right, blessed are they, or the dead rather, which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, says the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors. That's, is that working? Working? Yeah. Working? And what, what else happens? And their works do follow them. What we do in this life follows us out of this life, past this life. And it affects our future in the kingdom of God. We've got to stop thinking in such short term and begin thinking long term. Quit just thinking about making it to the end of the week or the end of the month, or finishing the year. We need to be thinking, what I'm doing right now, how does that affect me in the kingdom of God a thousand years from now, or 10,000 years from now? You might say, man, I've wasted so much time and opportunity. Most people have. But you know what the good news is? Take a breath. You're alive. You got another day, you may have another week, you may have another year, 10 years. Amen. Do you, what could the Lord do in you and with you if you fully gave yourself to him? Yes. And got serious about what's going on instead of just living life, getting up, going, coming back, cleaning the house, washing your hair, get up, do it again, and acting like you're gonna do that forever when you're going to do that just a few more breaths and this is over. Yeah. Said out loud, my works, my works will, follow me. will follow me. They go with me. They go with me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, somebody say glory to, God. glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. I can see the wisdom of the Lord in our teams that we have here in the church. People have the wrong concept about church. They think church is just you, you come and sit and hear a message and you go back. But no. Ephesians says that God gave gifts unto men, talking about apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, for the perfecting of the saints, the Amplified says, so that they can do the work of the ministry. God's will is that every believer be involved in the work of the ministry and the building up of the church so that they get reward and that they qualify for time to come to rule and reign over inheritance in the kingdom. I, I'm sure if we really understood it, believers from every quadrant would be rushing every church <laughs> and every ministry saying, let me help, let me help, let me do something. Let me have a part. Let me have a piece. Right? But as it is, too many churches, they beg people to help. And please, could you spare a minute? Please, could you spare a dime? You won't hear that here. It's a privilege to serve. The coming reward, the coming inheritance is amazing. And if you don't want to do it, if you don't desire it, then your heart disqualifies you anyway. And there will be some. They're going to have piles of gold and silver and precious stones and their, their reward. You're going to hear when they announce their reward and inheritance, when the Lord does, you're going to hear a gasp across the crowd. People are going to, what? What? They're going to be over what? That used to be Australia. They're going to be over what? But there'll be many. They had no time. They had no money for the kingdom. They had no time for the kingdom. They were too busy making a living, 
being, you know, their family. I know it's quiet. Is this reality or not? Is, is the Bible reality or not? You can live for yourself. And it doesn't mean you're lost. But it can mean that all the stuff that you did, when it's tested by God's fire, there was nothing to it. Nothing of meaning. Nothing for the kingdom. Nothing that lasts. I got good news, good news, good news. We're accepting on the teams right now. Right now. We, we can use hundreds of you in places all over the city. Let me ask you guys on the teams. Are you glad you're on a team? Are you happy about it? Do you feel like somebody's mistreating you and oppressing you? You see these guys out there in the cold today in the parking lot. I guarantee you they do not feel mistreated. Why? Why? Nobody's going to be thinking about how cold it was when the rewards are passed out later. Come on, you listen. That's going to be long ago forgotten. Nobody's going to be thinking about how it cut into my me time. Or my fishing or my golfing. Because none of that will matter. All of that will be long, long gone. How many have a desire? To not leave this world empty handed. Hmm? Not to enter into the next life with nothing to show for this life. How many would like a long train of works following you? You come into heaven and for the next five hours I hear clink, 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 clink. People think, what is that? That's some more boxcars of those works. Coming in behind them. Because they were a worker, man. I mean, they got up early. They stayed up late. They spent and were spent. They gave it all for the Lord and for the gospel. And so their works are many. And they follow them. Hallelujah. And the Lord's coming with his reward with him. How many think this reward's going to be something to shout about? It's going to be when, when he shows it to you. When he reveals it to you. Does anybody think that when the Lord says, you've been faithful over a few things, I'm making you rule over many things. Enter into the joy of the Lord. You think anybody look at it and go, oh, okay. <laughs> Great, thanks. I'm telling you, you will shout. The angels will probably have to come peel you off the top of the, the something. You will shout. You'll go, what, what, me, me, that's mine, that's mine, that's mine. All of that is mine. That's mine. That's mine. Three years later, you'll probably be going, that's mine. That's mine. What's yours? All of that. All of that. All of that. And I'll keep looking. All of that. It's all. It's all mine. It's my reward. God gave it to me. And it's not just for a 50 year lease. It's forever. It's forever. This is not a fairy tale. How many believe this is not a fairy tale? Don't take my word for it. If this sounds strange and new to you, go over these scriptures again. Study it out. Get it settled. I'm convinced if this is real to us, if we walked in the awareness of this truth, it would totally change the way we live. Every morning we'd get, we'd get up, we'd think, I don't have many of these days left. Lord, what can I be doing yes. that matters? Yes. And all you got to do, the Lord's not hiding these things from us. All you got to do is when opportunities come, don't pass them up. Hmm? Opportunities come to serve, to give, to do anything for the gospel, anything for his church, anything for his kingdom, anything for his people, anything. Do not be too busy to do it. Don't be too occupied to do it. Stand on your feet, everybody, please. Paul said this, I don't count myself to have arrived, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things that are behind. What can you do about yesterday? Well, then forget about it. 
<laughs> and reaching toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus, living like Jesus did. Did Jesus do the Father's will every day? Hmm? Doing good things everywhere he went, helping people everywhere he went, accomplishing the will of God and the plan of God every day and every night. He's your example. He's my example. Don't let the devil tell you you can't do it. You can. You can do it. Close your eyes. Say it out loud, Father God. Forgive me for not putting your things first every day and night. Forgive me for any opportunities you gave me that I didn't take. Open my eyes. Help me to be aware of what's really going on right now. What's about to happen past this life, past this world. Thank you for allowing me any part in your kingdom, in the building of your church, in the ministry of your people. Here am I, everything I am, everything I have, my time, my talent, my treasure, everything I have is available to you, your work, your people, your plan. Oh, hallelujah.